Hello everyone, welcome to the second video in the Django security series. Today we will learn about OS command injection and how to prevent them in a Django application. Actually the same method can be used in any Python program and not just for Django. So let's start with understanding OS command injection. So uh, let's consider I have an application here which takes in a domain name like say www google.com and does an ns lookup okay and it would return the result of the ns lookup here so basically it will give the ip address of the domain that we are looking up okay so that's what ns lookup does we provide a, a domain name and it returns the ip address associated with that particular domain right so that's how that's let's say that is what the functionality of the application is right you enter any other uh, domain like say www.amazon.com we'll look up and we get the ip address associated with uh, amazon.com right so that's how it it works right to implement this functionality we are using a command line program called NSLOOKUP. So here we have this uh, program called NSLOOKUP to which if we give a domain name, say www.google.com, it gives the uh, result of the, of the addresses, of the IP addresses of this domain, okay? So this uh, is the utility that we are using, okay? So at the back end, this is how we have implemented. Okay, we are uh, writing the command ns lookup uh, as the uh, as a string here. Okay, I'm passing the domain name into this. Whatever domain name I'm getting here, um, I pass it into this command ns lookup, and then it will get uh, inserted here. Okay, and then I'm executing this command using sub process. So I'm doing sub process dot checkout. Sorry, dot checkout command which shell is equal to true <clears throat> so with shell is equal to true meaning uh, a shell will be opened and then and then the command will be executed and then encoding utf8 whatever output i'm getting here i'm passing to the uh, template which is what gets displayed over here right this is the implementation how i'm doing so this is all okay in the normal scenario by passing the domain name i get the response uh, of the ns lookup command but consider a scenario where a user does something like this so he gives a domain name terminate it and then put something like ls hyphen la as well so here if you can see i am executing two commands up till here is the uh, ns lookup command output and here is the ls hyphen la output right so i'm essentially executing two commands okay well it should not be uh, it should not have happened that way right so what if the user does something like this google.com and then rm hyphen rf this will essentially delete all the files in the system right um, and he can obviously access many other um, files many other folders etc so this is dangerous so this is an example of os command injection where uh, you are allowing a user to execute os command through the application okay and the os command obviously will get executed on the uh, server on the back end uh, back end side Right. So this is an example of OS command injection. Okay. So how do we prevent this from happening? Right. The better way is to pass the domain name inside a code. So um, here at the uh, terminal, let's say we pass ns lookup, and then in quotes, say in single quotes, we read www.google.com. And even if we give this as the domain name, what will happen is it will show an error that the server can't find 
this okay so instead of giving it like this what we are essentially doing is we are uh, providing the domain name inside a single code but obviously uh, you can't expect uh, a user to provide an input like this right that's not very good from a user experience perspective and uh, you know, shouldn't uh, ask the user to do like this so to get this functionality in the back end here we have to go to this in the back end so if we go back in the view we have a module called shellx or at least that's how i i pronounce it uh, we just have to import um, shellx okay uh, we can use that and code the domain name right we'll get the coded domain name which we can then use it in the command so now let's print this command after we provide the input so let's go back and let's say www.google.com ls we enter we get an error here and if you see this is what we get ns lookup and inside a single code we get this entire input okay that's why it is not able to resolve ns lookup is not able to resolve a comma uh, a domain like this and hence it's giving an error so it says it's a called uh, sub process dot called processor uh, because this uh, the the ns lookup returned an error right so it is not allowing you to execute the command okay now to make this uh, work better let's put it inside a try statement so let's try okay so let's do this except we get this error right we'll uh, copy this error in case of such an error we will return an output which says invalid input yeah so let's go back let's go back refresh google.com enter we get this as an invalid input okay so now we have some um, sort of protection from uh, OS command section. So whatever command we execute after this doesn't get executed. Instead, it shows that we are we have provided a invalid input. So this is a better way of doing it. But uh, as a general practice, okay, what in 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 Python, especially for the sub process uh, module, it's recommended not to use shell is equal to true. Okay. So what we have done is the best way uh, essentially is to uh, use something called split, okay, shell x dot split instead of shell x dot quote, if we use something called lx dot split uh, and uh, split on the command. So first we have the uh, command which says ns lookup format domain name. So this is the entire command now that we are splitting it. In, okay so let's uh, print it and see what we get so I'll just copy paste this it still says it's invalid but here if you see now it has become a list of uh, the of the command and the values that we have inserted okay and that is what is uh, getting executed okay and if you look at it in the sub process part we have not mentioned shell is equal to true so that's generally considered a better option so this is considered the best option uh, where we don't need to use shell is equal to true okay so use shell x dot split the command okay and then execute the command so that's the better way of doing it rest everything remains the same uh, instead of shell x dot code use shell x dot split the command right so this is how you can protect yourself against uh, os command injection I have taken an example of NS lookup, but you can extend it to any OS uh, commands that uh, you are using uh, in the uh, application. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. I hope you find this useful. Uh, if it does, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. 
in the next uh, few videos we will be looking at authentication part so how to implement uh, user authentication how to implement uh, a good password policy how to implement account lockout how to implement uh, multi-factor authentication all of this will get covered in the next few videos so stay tuned for that and thank you